All right, well, we're live on Facebook. So welcome everyone. So glad you've been able to tune in this morning. My guest uh, is uh, Brandy with Murphy Group, Kansas City. And um, I'm Connie Hayworth. I'm the executive director at St. Anthony's Senior Living. And we have this set of features that we're doing about uh, helping uh, make that transition into your retirement years in a way that it takes out some of the stress uh, for both you and your family and uh, makes it a le little easier. So Brandy's here with me to talk about selling your house for seniors. Welcome, Brandy. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, I think we may be frozen, y'all. Hold on. Brandy, are you there? I am. You just cut out again. Uh, I don't. It must be the snow. How? It's saying your bandwidth is low, Brandy. You know, isn't this technology, everybody? We get so dependent on it and we love it so much, except for when it doesn't work. Think people <laughs> sell homes and relocate. It's, uh, you're cutting out, Brandy. It says your bandwidth is low. Um, let me see. Maybe I should sign oh, back now in. Oh, good. Now you're good. Oh, good. Okay. Great. All right. So we're going to talk about selling your home for seniors. My son and his wife have been trying to buy a house. I'll tell you, they couldn't bid fast enough, Brandy. They couldn't get their bid in in time. The homes are just exploding they're just selling so quickly they literally lucked out they made the offers on three houses in one weekend and finally the last one they only got it because someone had put in a contract they decided you know changed their minds and it had been on the market back on the market for four hours that's the only way they got a house and they have a baby coming in two weeks so it's kind of important so Tell us about the real estate market right now. What is going on? You know, oh, what? Kansas City is also still one of the most inexpensive cities to live in and it's centrally located it offers all the amenities that people are looking for in a big city with some added safety some great real estate it's easy to get around so i think part of the craziness people are feeling right now is that COVID happened and we're in the middle of this pandemic and it seemed like it was shutting so much stuff down and houses are selling as fast as they ever did, if not a little bit faster. Um, and a lot of it has to do with inventory. Um, I think the pandemic kind of pushed people to say they did or didn't want to be in a bigger or smaller space. It also made people want to have a accessibility feature to either friends or families or grocery stores and kind of made people reevaluate what they need and want out of their home and it made kansas city look even more attractive so we have people relocating in closer into the city from the suburbs we have people that have been commuting work-wise from other areas to kansas city saying you know it makes sense to be here full times because they are eliminating travel um but it is it's crazy we had a really really busy year i think we had one house in the last 12 months on the market for more than three weeks wow. and it, it's harder for buyers for sure than it is for sellers but in a different way and sellers also have to you know i've had a handful of clients send me notes about i mean since the market's so well handled currently can i just sell my house as is and selling your house as is makes sense in a lot of situations, but it's definitely not black and white, depending on what the goal is out of the house. Sometimes people's goal is to get a good value in a very short amount of time. Sometimes people are like, I'm not in a rush, but I want the best value. Some people want 
to assure their house is being bought by a specific type of buyer. And while we can't discriminate against the buyer pool, um, we can, you know, guide things towards attracting families or single mothers or the elderly population or the younger population. And sometimes that emotional sell is very important to a seller. So it, it's been a very emotional real estate year for sure. Well, I know that my kids, um, you know, they ended up putting down more uh, in escrow to show that they were serious. They actually wrote a letter, like you're saying that emotional buy, they actually wrote a letter to the sellers saying, we really want to, you know, raise our, our baby in your, you know, your house, um, you know, and, and so, you know, that, like you're saying that emotional, I actually saw that play out, you know, with my kids. Now, it's my understanding that interest rates are also playing part in this. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I would say like the thing about the interest rates is helping so much right now is because they've gone down and down and down. So people are refinancing. They are realizing if they are in a rental situation that that, you know, loans are, I mean, at two and two and a half percent lending is close to free compared to what people have experienced in the last 35, 45 years. So it doesn't make sense to not be using that as a benefit to your own financial gain instead of to somebody else's. Um, however, like when interest rates were at, you know, 4% 10 years ago, it wasn't slowing down the market as much as it did if it inflated. As it's deflated and gone down, it's made it more attractive. And people are gauging more than I've seen in the last 10 years about remodeling their current home or putting addition on to get extra space versus selling it and using that money on something that's already done or is already larger or is already in a location that they want better. Um, you know, and that's all good for the economy. It keeps attrition happening and keeps the market nimble, which we can all appreciate. Well, I know when COVID first hit, you know, you couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't do anything. And we found ourselves with a little extra spending money and we repainted our house. I mean, uh, home, I have some friends that work at Home Depot and they, you know, uh, they said that their sales were through the roof and you could go by on a Saturday and there'd be a huge line out the door waiting to go in. You know, like you said, people have really spent a lot of time at home and have remodeled and, and done things, uh, you know, to, to fix up their, their home. So when we're talking about seniors that are looking to make that next move in their, uh, you know, and choose their, the rest of their retirement, let's talk a little bit about, you know, tell us what, uh, what's special about that population and what are some special considerations that that group needs to be concerned about? Clearly, um, you know, we have people, especially as it relates to St. Anthony's that are coming from all over the city, but a lot of them are attracted to St. Anthony's because they are already in that central Jackson County area between the Plaza, Sunset Hills, Brookside, Waldo, North Casey Mo. Um, and that's a historic area. Those homes are old. And, you know, what has happened over the last 10 years is a lot of people that have been in that move every five or six or seven years, or they got into Brookside at the, the spot they could afford to, and now they have two kids and need more space, is that there was so much remodeling work done over the last eight or nine years. And there isn't as much opportunity as there used to be for entry into that area of living. So one of the things that we find with some seniors that are leaving is that they have been in their house for 10 or 15 or 20 or 40 or 50 years sometimes. Right. And so it's a different cell and it's a different process of going through the list of preparation for them. But we do really want to individualize that to the goal. Um, a lot of times I think in the senior population, there's some attractiveness to weigh out financially, especially while rates are so low, if they want to move first and then list their house, 
or if they just can't get comfortable financially understanding that they made a commitment to move to something that costs when their house has been paid off for 15 years and they haven't had a mortgage payment, that that seems very overwhelming to say, you know, I went from having zero expenses outside of taxes and utilities to a few thousand dollars a month while my house hasn't sold yet. I think that we can do a really good and comforting assessment to help seniors understand your house will sell. So what makes the process the most pleasant for you? And some people are fine because they're like, you know, I go to the grocery store and I'm running errands and my daughter lives close by and it'll be easy to have people in and out of our house until it sells. And some people are really uncomfortable with that. And COVID certainly brought that to light mm -hmm. where, um, you know, so I think the Oh, I think I lost you there, Randy. I show strong connection. Can you see me or hear oh, me? Now I hear you, yes. Okay, um, I think the beginning step really is having a very personal conversation about the comfort level of what selling looks like. Because do we wanna do anything to increase value? Do we wanna do anything to sell quicker? Do we want to, look at the options of relocating to where we're going first so that it's not chaotic. And the pandemic really inflated that conversation with health because right. our team usually does a video walkthrough of our listings so that when we have buyers that wanna see the house, we can say, did you read this information? Are you qualified to buy? Did you go through the walkthrough? Cause we don't need extra people coming through the house that say, mm -hmm. oh, it's a galley kitchen and I don't want a galley kitchen because that's exposure and kicking people out of their house for a little while for no reason. Um, but you know, that, that, that was the biggest change of last year is I think that we saw people purchasing homes they actually hadn't physically seen. They had seen them through video. They had seen them through FaceTime or a Zoom meeting like this where we walked through a house we could get you know, printouts of their exact floor plan so that people could understand that sizing to minimize right. contact of people coming in and out of others' homes. We also oh, you know, yeah. looked at quite a bit of options where people were going ahead because interest rates are low and doing a little creative financing to move first and then sell their house and then close out that financing so, you know, if you're sitting on a home that you haven't had a mortgage on for five years or 20 years, or it's been paid off for a long time, and we know the house is going to sell for, I mean, just. Oh, I think I've lost you again. I then pay that off. There you are. Ah, there you are. Happening. Okay. Every time I speak, then you come right back. <laughs> we just got to talk more. Um, so, I mean, I think that, that that is the first step. It's the comfort level of what is your ideal situation because it's emotional, it's hard, it's change. And then kind of back into, well, what prep are we willing and not willing to do to the house? Are we willing to spend any money to get a better sale or do we want to do minimal things, lay down some mulch, do some deep cleaning and sell it as is and market it in a way that we get the best buyers to the table for that situation. Right, right. Uh, I remember when my grandmother lived, moved out of her house that she'd been in for 50 years and, you know, you call, well, I've been in my house for 30 years. Um, you know, you collect a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot. Oh, think about it until you start going through drawers and closets. And it doesn't matter if you're in an 800 square foot house or a 5,000 square foot house, there's a lot of stuff packed in there. And you don't really think about it until you start pulling it all out. And so, you know, um, one person we're going to be talking uh, to during this series is also someone who talks a little bit about downsizing. Uh, she has a downsizing service and, um, you know, uh, 
uh, an apartment, certainly in a retirement community, isn't going to, um, you know, hold what your 5,000 square foot home held. But you can certainly get all those great pieces that, uh, you know, really have a lot of memories uh, into the home. So there's a there's a lot to the process. I really hadn't thought about how COVID had it had affected you all, but that's such a great point. You know, people, of course they wouldn't want, you know, a lot of people coming in and out of their house. Do you even have open houses at this point? So we have had open houses. Um, I think that, you know, everybody can find a yearly write-up on agents' opinions of open houses. Open houses are primarily in the career of working in real estate, a lead generation tool. We very rarely have the buyer of your home come through your open house. We have people that have started looking at homes, maybe in the general area that are getting ideas. And the agent's goal at open houses is to showcase that they're knowledgeable in the area, are active, have clients, and to get them as a buyer, because they're probably not buying a house today. They're probably buying a house in the next two months. So when we have open houses and how we've handled them through COVID has been first mandated by the KCRAR guidelines of real estate legally of what they've decided to allow and not allow. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes a seller is like, I know my neighbors want to see my house. I know that this is a gray area. There would possibly be traffic. And now, you know, with the weather being nice and people will be walking around outside, it's more opportunistic that we'll hold more again. Usually in, in a market where things are selling so quickly, we're doing the video tour. We might be doing a full mapping of the floor plan of the home. We're asking buyers and their agents to sign COVID release things that one, they're healthy and two, they won't hold us accountable if they end up sick because they're out looking at houses. And three, right. that they've looked over all that information before they see the house. And because the inventory is low, we're usually saying, let's list the house on a date we're ready, but a Tuesday or a Wednesday, which gives agents and their clients time to either call us Right. Oh, you're fading out again. So bizarre. There you are. I just needed to talk more. <laughs> that's usually not <laughs> like a problem your voice for is me. A magnetic to our connection. Yeah, it, that's usually not a problem for me to talk a lot, but I mean, what you're saying is absolutely fascinating. The, the real estate world is not, you know, something I've spent a lot of time in, but it affects what we do so much because most people need to sell their house in order to, you know, um, have the fin financial wherewithal to move into a retirement community. It's a big, it's one of our biggest assets, uh, you know, a financial assets for all of us that are homeowners. So, uh, you know, it, it's absolutely fascinating, um, you know, what you're absolutely. saying. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, Brandy, if you had to, if, if you had to give, um, you know, two or three pieces of advice to a senior who's looking at making that transition to a retirement community and needs to sell their home, you know, what, what, what magic words do you have for us? I mean, first of all, I would say it's your home and it's your experience. So, you know, call us, call someone that you trust, call if you have someone in your family or a neighbor that you like a lot, just have a list of how you want things to go and start with a real conversation about how you want the process to go and what you want the timeline to be. Having a house full of items, it's just like watching your child grow up or watching a pet grow up. You don't see it happening because you're there every day. And so a lot of times when somebody's interested in selling, I will send them a few homes that are close to theirs that have sold recently so they can see abstractly what their house looks like in comparison to what sold at top dollar and at bottom dollar to just see right. you're like, oh yeah, there is. 15 years of Christmas cards in my back bedroom. Um, and, and, you know, only I had a, that. <laughs> yeah. Start having a conversation about what, what things are staying, going, 
who would want them and where they would be, or if that's something you would rather be moved out of before it's being handled because it's hard or you would have already gotten rid of it. The third thing that we talk to people about is how involved do they want to be or not be in some minimal prep that we should always do before we sell a house. And that is checking on exterior maintenance that if you don't see, you might know, not know needed have to happen. Sometimes uh -huh. it doesn't mean we're going to do it. We're just going to disclose it as part of the information we share for a sell so that we don't have a buyer that comes back and says, well, we want an $8,000 new paint job on the house because the paint in the back needs painted. We right. could have avoided that by saying the home probably needs to be painted by this summer. Um, decks are the same way. It's like, if you don't go out and use your deck, we might just want to say, you know, we're excluding the deck. It works fine, but it definitely has some deferred maintenance needed on it. You right. know, we want windows to be, we want the information on them. Um, a lot of, I mean, roofs in Kansas city get replaced by insurance more than they don't. So you don't know you have a roof issue unless you had somebody look at it or something's right. leaking. So right. we can have an assessment of your roof for free and find out, is there significant weather damage to where it's worth finding out? Or is there other reasons that we know by insurance that the roof will have to be Oops. We um, oh. there just we talk go. to me. Just talk to me. I'm talking to you. There, there's a list of, you know, maintenance things, electrical, plumbing, roofing, windows that we have to check so that we legally disclose correct stock to sell. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we know that if we have to do it. Right. Oops. There we go again. Oh, I can't hear you. Just it's a real decision on whether we're going to sell first or we're going to move first and how mm. we will juggle the money around that safely right. and not add stress to the seller. Exactly, because there, you know, there there are uh, we of course we on our side want it to be the smoothest transition possible to come to St. Anthony's and, and you know, live your retirement here. And so it's hard when they come in and they're really stressed out about the sale of the house. And I guess my experience in, in 25 years has been, you know, if you're able to go ahead and move out, take a little time, you know, go back home, get what you want and, and then sell the house. For those people, it seems to be much less stressful. Yeah. And that I think the stressful part of moving is one change and two items. So right. even if you have two levels of stairs and you have to go to the basement to get to your garage and your house, it is the routine you're doing daily. And so, you know, sometimes we spend a little time just envisioning what it, what would feel better. Would it feel better if the bathroom was closer to the kitchen? Would it feel better if you had two bedrooms because you need an office? And sometimes it helps us change the direction of our timeline up. And sometimes it's like, you know what? Right. Oh, I think I lost you again. Are you there? Uh oh, Brandy. My Are you there? Oh, no, I got you. That's crazy. I'm so sorry. That is so weird. Well, I tell you what, there's one thing I'm worried about right now. No, I'm not even worried about it. This, there's one thing I'm concentrating on, and that is the, the Chiefs Super Bowl this weekend, right? We're Absolutely. Over here at St. Anthony's, we have a huge Super Bowl party coming up. So it's Spirit Week over here. Today is the day to wear your Chiefs hats. So I have my Chief hat, Chiefs hat on today. And man, it's going to be a great weekend if we can just get there with this weather. I guess it's supposed to be some yucky weather. So I know it's going to be cool, but that's good for chili and inside watching. Yes, exactly. 
Uh, well, Brandy, I so appreciate you making time for us. This has been fascinating, even with our technological challenge, but I appreciate you being here with us, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Brandy uh, can be reached at uh, Murphy Group, Kansas City. And what's your phone number, Brandy? Uh, my number is 816-550-2740. And I'll post my phone number and my email address. If you have questions about location or values of your home, some people have no idea. Right. Oops, are you there? Oh, I lost you again to help you in any way we can and are always free to answer questions. All right, well, Brandy, thank you. And folks, Brandy, I know we have, a, we, we, uh, have recommended her as a realtor to some of our, uh, our residents and she does a great job. So you do yourself well to give her a call. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a blessed day and we will talk to you soon. Best wishes, go Chiefs. Go Chiefs.